Hi all, welcome back to more Unconditional Surrender. This is training scenario four. This would be my part 10. And uh, I had to go and double check there because uh, I wonder where I was at because I see some counters tilted this way. Um, it did turn out that I had uh, finished the tournament just forgot to turn these round. I should really make the use of the sequence of play and mark it with something as a reminder to say where I am. But um, I dare say I always have the video footage, so I can always look back on that. Um, okay, so a couple of things to talk about. Um, one thing to mention is I could have had an air unit supporting my attack into Denmark. I could have brought one of these because one of the places this is allowed to be is adjacent to Denmark. So that air unit could have been in that hex there. And being able to support it, well, I mean, even further back than that. To, eh, well, no, it couldn't be further back because it needs to be adjacent to the border. Uh, either Denmark, Netherlands, Belgium, France, UK, whatever it is, to keep the home defence on the west side um, intact. Uh, so I hadn't thought of that. Um, fortunately, we managed to get away without needing it anyway. And uh, the other thing I've noticed um, while watching back is, and I've, I've not got to the bit where I've done it yet because it was just done in the last part, but uh, it was watching a previous part to the first time we drew an area seize marker. We drew it for the Soviet faction. It was the Soviet faction drawn it out of the cup. However, it does say, it now again, I've just got the rule book here. I was... Um, um, the designer Sal uh, had made a comment um, saying that it might be a better idea because he, he is expecting, I don't know if I mentioned this last night, I might have done. He is expecting to uh, maybe get a revision, a new revision of the living rules done by the end of the month. So I think I'll wait before I print out the rule book until he's come out with another revision, just in case, you know. He did suggest that I use a RATA. Um, document to check up things and maybe print that out. I mean, to be honest, that's 31 pages long in itself. Okay, I don't need all of the bits. Some of it are regarding the playbook. Um, but uh, I wouldn't know what bits to really print out and not. Uh, so, also, I find that a little bit tricky to look through. Uh, where it, where is the rule book? Has everyone highlighted in blue that's new? Um it's a bit tricky to go through. I'm not saying it's not a useful document. It is. Maybe more so for the people that are, you know, play the game a lot and are keyed up on all the rules. But um, I almost printed it out the day and then I thought, no. So I'll persevere just now between my rule book and the, the up-to-date version and use my tablet or the computer across there. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and wait till he comes out with this newer revision, and then I'll then I will print the rule book out. Yeah, so but my mistake was the very first time we draw drew the area seize marker, it was the Soviets that drew drew it, and we took we put the we picked uh, Lithuania uh, to cede to the Soviet Union. Sorry the. Soviet faction. I don't. They're not. Are they the Soviet Union? USSR. Is that? I think it is. Isn't it? It's not. They're not classed as Russia at the moment, are they? Whatever. Right? So it's all one and the same, isn't it? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe that's not. Grant. Maybe that's not politically correct. It says USSR in the book, so we'll stick with that. <laughs> Calling them that. Um. So anyway, it was them that drew the marker. So. It said, step one is select a country with a USSR disputed area that has not been ceded to USSR and is either neutral, an active Western country with no access unit in it, or an active Western country. Uh, I'm just reading this part of the rule book, so this isn't the most up to date, but I, d I don't think that's any different, that part. Um, so we picked, and the reason we picked Lithuania, and be, I mean, it's the Allies that are making this choice, because the Soviets aren't really in the game, but then again, when I go and play the game fully, if I do go and play the full game, we're going to play it as three factions, but the Allies and the Soviets are going to be sort of playing together. Right? So the decisions that I make for the Allies are going to be 
some of the ones that I want you want to make for the Soviets, um, the USSR, and um, obviously the Axis are kind of on their own. Um, but anyway, we we, put, we deliberately picked Lithuania because it is one of the ones that does not end up having to place a pro-Axis marker in its capital. There is two of them, the two being Bessarabia, which is in Romania, and the other one being up in Finland, Karelia or something, uh, up in Finland. So, ideally, as a Soviet, you want to leave, I mean, this is my thinking anyway, I think you want to leave them to last, till you have to put them in, because it's going to put a pro-axis marker, give the chance of uh, the Germans taking Romania. So, as you can see, Germans have taken, uh, got Romania on their side, but I'm going to have to change this, because that's a mistake. Because what I, I did read at the time, but didn't read the next time I drew an area C's marker, I drew it as a, as the Axis faction. So I thought I would have the choice of where the area C's was going to be, was going to happen. And obviously being, wanting to choose either Bessarabia or Karelia to give us a pro-Axis marker, to then give us a better chance of taking these... Uh, bringing these countries in as an allied country, uh, which is what we've done. However, it doesn't say that. It says, um, in fact, there's a little bit of a comic reference to it. Yeah, there we go. No, 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 no. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not, maybe it's been added into the the country yeah I think the, the other bit's been added in the rata then hang on well it has actually been added into the living rules but it's not showing up in blue but then it is just a bit of flavour text <laughs> a bit of a it's basically when it says um, so Talking area seized, it says when this marker is pulled from the diplomacy cup, if the Nazi Soviet pact policy has ended, but it's not, or all USSR disputed areas are ceded to the USSR, well, they're not, remove this marker from the scenario and pull another marker. Well, but that's not the case. So, otherwise, regardless of which phasing faction pulled the marker, right? So, regardless, it doesn't matter who pulls the marker, the Soviet faction must do the following. And then the little bit that's been added there is, sorry, Axis or Western faction, better luck next time. So, um, I've blundered there because I thought it was the Germans that were able to pick. I thought it was the Axis that were able to pick, and that's not the case. So, that being the case, um, obviously they would have not picked that and tried to hang off. Uh, so, but I can I can fix this by doing what we'll do is we'll just pick Latvia, right? So I'll change. Uh, I'll change the Bessarabia marker. I'll take that back away, and we'll put the Latvia one in. So Latvia is ceded to the the Soviets, and that doesn't trigger the pro-axis marker going in. But what I'm going to have to now do is take Romania back out. Because Romania had the pro-axis marker in. Then we put a pro-axis marker on that. Uh, and then we drew a political success and we chose to select... No, no, they drew a political failure. Which was an unrestricted option so we could pick Romania to join the Allied faction. So but what I'm gonna do is take Romania away. They did not have a pro axis marker on them. This had a pro axis marker on it and I'm gonna say that the political failure allowed us to select Hungary and allow Hungary to join the Axis faction instead. So that's that's fine. Um so Romania I'll put back, I need to take their, that off and their wall marker off and then we're going to get um, Hungary and the box back. Which is fine because all, all I want is just some fashion to join me, that needs to be um, 
like I say, that's part of the part of the conditions for succeeding. I think Hungary might have only two units rather than what Romania had three, so let's have a look here. So I'll put their well actually let's just double check their will and uh factories for Hungary are their national will is four and factories is only one. What did Romania have? I had six and I had two factories, yeah. So actually on the back of the counter it actually tells you then starting well, doesn't it? Like does it tell you in the back of the production maybe? Their factories. <laughs> it does, yeah. So <laughs> Well we do have three units. They do have three units. So their will was four. Uh, so national will is four. And the production is only one. Like I say, I, I, I don't think this... I can put this on the one. I'm not sure about it. If, you can, if, if it starts right away on one. However, I'm just starting to turn now anyway. So it'll, it'll be rechecked anyway. So, And then we've got three Hungarian units. We can take this away. Um, two... Uh, Two um, garrison units and one full full uh, field unit. So we'll put one of the garrisons in their capital, and yeah, and yeah, we don't need to be in cities as I, as I was trying to do last night, wasn't I? Um, we'll put that full strength one there. I like I say, I'm pretty sure there's something that's that does not allow me to move into. Um, uh, Germany, so well, that's actually well, it's Austria, isn't it? but I think the, the game starts with that being Germany, isn't it? Well, maybe that, that was the first thing that happened, wasn't it? Um, I don't, I just say that wasn't classed as the actual war, then anyway. Um, oh, we've got another guy, so I suppose I'll put him on the border there. That's in the border of the Soviets. But I mean, uh, yeah. Unless they're allowed to come into Germany, they're not really going to get used, are they? Well, let's just, let's just put them back in that city then. Okay. So we've got Hungary instead of Romania. And that was because of that was a mistake. But uh, That's why I like to look things back. And then if I can catch them myself. And what I'll do is I'll put a comment in the header of part eight or, well, it would have been nine, it was just the last part, wasn't it? Saying that I fixed that in the next part and that shouldn't have been. And so I think that's that's what it should have been. Okay, let's well, move on. So we are at the start of the turn. So we want the weather for February. Um, let's see. And then if it comes up poor, we'll, we'll have a look at the possible possibility of going across to Norway, but um, I'll need to carefully look at it just to make sure it's feasible. So February is still part of the same chunk at the top there. So yeah, it can't be fair apart from the warm zone. So uh, let's get our weather dice. Um, there we go. Well, we do have one one, but that's for the warm, isn't it? So we've got a five for the blue. A three, f that might be poor still, maybe. Yeah, as one to four is poor. So we've got um, severe for the cold zone. So I'm just going to mark this while I'm doing it. Um, poor, uh, poor for the, the mild zone. So we do have the poor result. And then it's f actually fair in the warm zone, but that's not really going to nothing's happening down there so right that's that so it does it does give us a poor result to maybe consider like I say I do need to look at it and see because you don't want to waste that um, what's it called surprise attack marker if it's if it's going to fail you don't want to waste it because you just get one shot at it and then it goes Goes away and then you've got to buy it back at, at like twenty points. Um. 
Well, here's the Declare War theories right now, Grant. So now is your time to find out if going for uh, Norway is a possibility. Well, hold on here, though. You don't really have your air unit. Well, it's got four sorties. Plus, do I not need to have... I can't remember how you'll do that. Uh, what's the other thing? Yeah, what's one we cut? What is the weather in come March then? How how does it change? Yeah, you've got a you got a slim chance, a dire a one to get a fair result. And then if you are fair in March, you're not going to be fair in April. If you're not fair in March, the chances of getting fair in April though are a die roll of one. So, mm. T so to be honest, I think poor is probably the best that we're going to get. I, 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 yeah, I mean, there's an outside chance of getting fair, but. So let me pause a second and then look at the possibility of doing this in the poor weather then. Right, I've been really having a look at this, I'm not sure it's. That's a good idea or not. Because when we attack Norway, um, we're going to put a unit in Oswald. They have two units. They are garrison units. So remember, they're going to get a minus two to any combat. Um, but I think we put one of them there. This is in Sweden. This is in Sweden. So, I also, thinking about it, I think you can make an amphibious assault into a hex that's adjacent to a port as well. So, if the fact that the Norwegian unit was in there, I'm trying to sort of see if we could do the amphibious invasion and if we didn't defeat the unit or retreat it, I think if, we, if the Norway unit's in there and we do the amphibious invasion and we do not move that guy, then it fails, the amphibious invasion fails. So I suppose to try and, here's my thinking here, I don't know if this is right or not, that to try and have a safer bet of it, at least succeeding with the actual invasion and leaving, leaving a unit across here, then again, we're not going to be in a port, are we? But you, you can't do that there, because I, I couldn't land here, although this is adjacent to the port. To be honest, this is a water hex side. Not only that, it's in Sweden, so I don't think I can do that. I think that's as far as I can zoom in. And then you've got the same on the other side of this. It's a water hex side there. So that is part of Norway, so I suppose I could land there, but I'm not adjacent to the port. So I think the only way of doing it is you actually have to take, like, get a result in Oslo. And if that fails, then you're sent back. So let's have a look at the modifiers for the, the combat. So yeah, let's just look, let's just count some numbers up here to see what it would be. Because um remember what you're what I'm gonna be doing here is you're gonna be uh you're gonna have a unit with a convoy, you're gonna use your surface action as an escort, um you're gonna to have to use a surprise attack marker. And um, the other thing you're going to do is drop your paratroopers. You have an airdrop. That's what all happens in the training scenario for it. So um, it kind of makes sense to be looking at it and thinking, well, you want to make sure it succeeds. Now, the airdrop marker gives a minus two. I've got it open here, actually. Um... Uh, yeah, you can because you can place that anywhere, can't you? Within three of a of an air unit, and that's why we've got a flat. We've got to have an air unit up here in uh, Alborg as well, which is one, two, three away from Oslo. So we've got the air unit there, so that we can drop the air air drop marker in Oslo, and just seeing there. Yeah, if an enemy air or ground unit in the placement hex is attacked, 
in the placement placement hex as in being the placement hex where where the airdrop marker is, um, it will get a the defending unit applies a combat minus two dyro modifier. There's no effect on any, any enemy naval unit. So the three markers will be getting involved from the Axis point of view. One thing is to remember the the Western faction have a ground support marker. So my guess is that will get chucked in as well. So that's all that they can do. And yeah. So looking at modifiers for the German unit. So the German infantry unit. Uh, not a tank unit, and remember, we're going to improve it well. So, first of all, we're going to get a plus two. Uh, doesn't apply, doesn't apply, doesn't apply to us. It will apply to him. Doesn't apply, doesn't apply. We're not a tank unit. Um, he's not going to be isolated. Now, remember, this is a minus one. This, this isn't a minus two. And this is an assault action that gets carried out. The amphibious, um, well, it's called an amphibious assault. It's not a mobile attack at the end of the at the end of the cross and it's actual assault, you only get one attack and that's it. Um there's one other thing you can do when you land you can move and you can move into the port. Because if you land in a hex that's adjacent to the port, obviously then you can move into it. So that's a slight difference to what what's been done. So it is attack it's still attacking a unit in a hex affected by poor weather. So that takes us down to one. It's a minus one member, not a minus two. Um, next one, attacking unit in a hex that contains a city. Well, that's what we're doing as well. So that takes it down to zero. I'll just use the... I know that's a ten, but let's just say it's back down to zero. Attacking across the straight hex side, no. Attacking across the cana canal, mountain or river hex side, no. Not going to apply. Air support. We would have air support, but again, remember, it's going to be in poor weather. So we're going to have an air support, so we're back up to plus one. Right, and then moving down. Amphibious invasion assault attack. Minus one if you're attacking a unit in any hex. So we get that minus one, taking us down to zero again. Um, sorry. Taking us down to zero again. We, we will have naval support because that's what the surface action provides. It's a naval escort. It's like having a naval unit that's just a one-shot. The, the, the Germans didn't have so much in the way uh, surface fleets and that, did they? So we would get a plus, but again, because of the poor weather, it's only going to be a plus one. So that, in actual fact, is going to be the final result. That's it. We don't get any other, we've not got any other units joining in with us all because we're only going to have one unit crossing there. So we're going to we're going to be attacking them with a plus one, which, okay, it's still a plus, but not enough for what. Um, and you can see there that the two numbers that are greatly affected, obviously, are the air support and the poor weather, and also the naval support and the poor weather. So in fair weather, they are. Well, sorry, one other one. They're attacking a unit in, in poor weather. So there's three. In fair weather, that four, that plus one becomes a plus four. So it's a huge difference. Now, the um, the Norwegians, uh, admittedly, would be sitting at not a two, but a minus two, because they are a reduced strength unit. So in poor weather, it's going to be a one against a minus two. But you can see in fair weather, it's going to be a four against a minus two. I don't think it's worth that risk, is it? That seems... Oh! And... Sorry, I forgot about one other thing. They've got ground support of it all. So... It'd be a 1 against a minus 1. Because they'll, they'll be using that. Or a 4 against a minus 1. I mean, I would take that roll for sure, but... 1 against a minus 1... Mm, I don't think we should do it. So that is my thinking of how, how that all works. Ho hopefully I've got all that right, of course. Which is, that's telling me I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it because we do need Norway if we're going to succeed at, the, at, this, at this mission. At this scenario, we require Poland 
in France, well, I'm not going to count the UK, but UK is an option. We're, we're required to have conquered Poland, have conquered France, and then have conquered four others. Belgium, the Netherlands, are pretty straightforward. Denmark, we've already conquered, and then we need one more. And, okay, it doesn't need to be Norway, but what else is it going to be? You know, there's not another great option. You know, I suppose, I suppose you could have, well, we've took Hungary now, you could have come down and went into Hungary, or or you could actually go down in, uh, what's that, Yugoslavia. But, uh, yeah. But we're still going to take France, and they're over the west, so this is all over this side, and we're not, not going to have that much time to do all this. So, well, let's wait until the weather becomes, I mean, we're going to have to wait until the weather becomes fair to go into, Fra go into France. When is it? When the months that guarantee the weather? It's um, July to September, isn't it? But I'd like to hope that in May or in June we'd get a fair weather to be able to go into Denmark and Netherlands and the Belgium. So let's just let's just move on and set things up so that we're ready, basically, and wait on the fair weather. I think that's probably what you have to do. Um, so, where does that bring us back to? Yeah, the it brings us back to the declare war phase, because that's what we were looking at. And wondering if we were going to declare war on Norway. Well, we're not. So, move on. Economy phase, right. Uh, so, economy, German stalwart got 14 factories, uh, so 28. Um... French still on 16, they've not done that with ours. Uh, British on 18. And uh, we've got Hungary. Well, it's just got one. And uh, that's that. Still no strategic warfare. Uh, strategic movement. Um, not sure it's required now, really. These need to stay here. These need to stay here. These need to stay, well, like I've, like I've found out. But we've got that extra Luftwaffe unit. Um, where's that strategic movement marker, actually? Oh, no, it's up in the vent, so that's fine. Where's our other aircraft? Ah, that's what it is. I've took that off and not switched them over. I like to have the air unit on top. Right, and then the other air unit is, well, it's clearly there, isn't it? He's beside the NOR unit. Ooh, he's still reduced. Did he just come in last turn or the fact that I've had him covered up? Did we miss that? No, I don't think so. so. He actually needs to be stacked with a convoy, which is in here. So I've got them the wrong way around. Come the time, that's where he needs to be. He needs to be stacked with a convoy. So let us... Um, well, we can bring this guy back out now as well. I'm not leaving him in. Uh, actually, where were we? We were on strategic movement. Well, why not use strategic movement on that guy in Copenhagen then? Yeah, let's do that. So let me do my strategic move on him. And bring him right down the transport. Let's finish in here, I suppose. I think we need something else down the south, though. Let's bring him down the south, then. Bring him down to... He actually can finish in that hex, can't he? Because normally you wouldn't be able to finish in a zone of control, but because these these units are in force, they don't exert zone of control, so... So I'm going to bring this guy all the way down and around, and through Berlin, Leipzig, Hanover, Frankfurt, and then finish here. Yeah, and that's just got everything adjacent. We've got one other space just here, which the six army unit could probably fill. <laughs> okay, that's strategic movement. Moving on now to operations, so I'll just push on and I'll activate that six army unit for one point and just move him into there, I think. Move him in a little bit. 
Uh, yeah. Just waiting. And uh, let's fix this then. Um, right, I can't really... I'm going to have to activate that. And, well, I'll activate it and I'll move it into Bremen then. That's another point. And then I'll activate the NOR unit and move it in beside the convoy in uh, Hamburg. That's another point. Down to 25. And I think that's all. Uh, right, yeah, I don't need a unit up here, do I? What I need up here is the air unit to be able to do the airdrop marker. And I think that's all I need. Well, why don't you move the air unit up, Grant? Yes, indeed. Why don't you? Um, let's do that then. So it can rebase um, up to 10 hexes away per sortie. Right, so you could do it once and then do it again. It's a different action. It's the same action. You're just doing it again. So I'm going to rebase from there to there. And that adds one sortie. Because I don't think I don't think we've got another use for them. Um, I'm gonna have to start thinking about what um, what happens down here. Uh, yeah, I got some some replies to some things. I think again from Sal, the designer, um, regarding air strikes back and forth. Unless I was Martin. Martin was made some comments as well. Um, so, I think I might want to try and put the French aircraft further back. Right, well, let's, let's finish, make sure we're finished with our the Axis side of things. I think that's all they're going to do. And now they're just going to be sitting in that position now, because this guy's going to get back to full strength. That's going to lose a couple of sorties. So, yeah, even if it had three sorties and it was able to go, it only needs... I don't think it uses a sortie to drop the airdrop marker, for instance. So it would just need the sortie to make the attack. You know, and it's just one attack, so it only needs one sortie, I think. Um, so I, I think we're set up to be able to maybe try it next turn, but is, was there a chance to fair weather next turn? Is it March? I think there was a slim that Dyro will won. There is, yeah. Ah, you, you never know. You never know. Okay, that's Axis done. Um, I'll just put them back. Now, everything's in supply. No issues there, I don't believe. Um, yeah. And... Uh, Right, let's, let's have a look at this possible French air situation then. And maybe should we start thinking about getting the BF across? If the air was... I mean, they, these air units can't move any further. The thing is, an air strike is seven hexes away. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, if I move this air unit back to here... No, that's still within seven, isn't it? Seven, yeah, so it would have to be one hex further back to there. Um, what support would he be able to have against attack on the French? He'd have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he gets support on all three of them, this one as well. Two, three, four, f Does he get that one? One, two, three, four, five, no. That is the one that he misses out on, and obviously misses out on all the forts. And remember, he can't supply air support when the Netherlands and Belgium units are in anyway. They can only support their own nationality. Um, and obviously the, this is the British here across there, they, they're only going to be able to support the BEF when it comes across. That's maybe not a terrible thing to do then, put that back to there, is it? Because me, my thinking of as the access is I want to knock that air unit out before we even 
before we even invade France. But if it's out of range, I'm not going to be allowed to do that. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. So the this is going to fly rebase to here. And that'll take a sortie. Um, of course, there's nothing to stop once once the invasion of France begins, or in, or even for that matter, Belgium. There's nothing to stop this air unit moving into here. But what does hamper it is it costs another sortie for it to move into there, so it's spending it that extra sortie. So it's annoying. Because probably that's probably what I'm going to do when we go into Belgium. I'm probably going to rebase that. Well, then again, you've got to have taken Brussels to be able to do that, Grant. So, but even just moving into that hex there, though, gets in range. But costs an extra sortie for that one move. So I think that's I think that's good thinking. Don't know though. Um. Do we bring the BF across them? Why not just get this over and done with? You gotta be careful of putting it in Calais because that I will that doesn't prevent these guys from retreating. So I want to make sure that there's a gap. Well, there's nothing to stop you from. Why not just put in La Havre and then move it a little bit? <coughs> You know, maybe just move into this hex here so that. Okay, let's let's do it right. So what do we have to do with that then? This is a convoy. This is like moving across now. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna transport that across. Till I have. Um, and. So they trace a path into the sea zone, and it's zone ten to come across. Now you've got to allow the chance for the axis to try and intercept. Now they, oh, actually can they? No, they can't. They're not going to. They can. Cause they've not got. The only thing they've got is this: the surface action. So they could use that to intervene. Um, I believe, um, but I want to say they can only intercept from one C zone, can't they? So, I mean, this is their area away up here. So yeah, I mean they can't. I want to say they can win. I mean something that moves into C zone twelve or thirteen, isn't it? <clears throat> Let's make sure I know what I'm talking about. Right, so we're doing a naval transport here. A couple of things that can intercept it is an air, air interception. That would only be, the air unit would have to be in um, the port that the C zone is in. So, yeah, the C zone, of, or the port of which the C zone is affected. So, you know, we would have to have an air unit in Cherbourg here for it to be able to, or Cali. Or, uh, well, actually, is that uh, Antwerp? Antwerp would work, you see? So if we did take Belgium before we moved into France and we put an air unit there, we would be able to intercept this crossing. Um, but that's the, that's the air part of it. Now, what is the naval interception? Here we go. Okay, I think it's a two, it's a two Z, Z zone thing. I thought for some reason that was just for the British. It didn't affect the... Right, there's one of them that the Axis only get one C zone in the... Is that the supply, maybe? And the UK get two C zones. A warship can intercept within two C zones of its current location. Either this i.e. the sea zone it occupies and a sea zone adjacent to it. Uh, 
Okay. I don't think they can do it anyway, but I suppose I'm just trying to understand this and make sure th these are the bits that I'm a, a little bit not quite so certain about. Um, so if it was two C zones, now how do, if we use that surface action marker, does that have to come? Oh, right. <laughs> We're in the rule book again. Give us a second. So surface action marker. Right, as well, as well show you this while I'm reading it. I should do that more. It, it's just it's more awkward than this game because of the lack of space that I've got. And God knows how I'm, I don't think I'm going to really do this if if I do the full game. I'm just going to you're just going to have to look at your own rule book and follow along. Um, if I actually may play surface action any time, it could use a surface warship warship unit to perform a naval action. Well, we're considering doing a naval interception, which is a naval action. To perform the action, the marker is first put in a friendly port that does not already contain a warship unit and is either in the marker's country or in any country from which a naval movement path can be traced back to a friendly port in the marker's country. The path cannot be intercepted. After it is placed, the marker is then treated as a surface warship unit. It is immediately activated to perform a naval action. It tracks and adds sorties to its total, as would a warship unit. When its activation ends, put this marker a number of turns later on the turn track equal to its total sorties plus one, then remove its sorties marker. Yeah, okay. So we would need to, you know, the best we can get for this just now is putting this in, I mean, in Hamburg, where, is, where we've got our convoy. So, and we would then be able to intercept in two C zones from there. So that's the first C zone. That's the second C zone. So you can see we cannot do it into there. Um, interestingly, if we had to, well, the thing is, if we've taken Norway, we've used our surface. Well, you don't you don't need to use that surface action marker to go in amphibious assault, but it does give you a plus two modifier because it's as if you've got a warship with you. Um, so. And we kind of want to use it for there anyway. But it, it looks like we can't intercept this anyway. But I just wanted to go through that to try and grasp how it works and think that sounds something like it's going to work. So so they, they move into Season 10. We are not intercepting. They then decide what port that they're going to land in and they land in this port. Now, they then incur a sort of each. Is that right? For doing that. Now they can also now turn around and go home. Um, I want to say because they dropped this off in the hex, and I want to say that they could continue and go back to they could go back to Southampton. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that that still only cost them the one sorty to do the both legs of that. But 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 <laughs> I'm not 100% sure of that one, so... Right, so we'll leave... Well, we want to leave them here anyway because we need to now be able to supply this British Expedition Force. So, and if I've not got that convoy there to do the supply trace, we're not going to be able to supply it. So, so that's us. We've done that. We'll move that across. Uh, and that, sorry, that... To activate that BF, it would have cost us, and it would cost us two because he's a mobile unit. So we would have spent two production to, to activate him, and then move him across. Okay, right. Well, the British have done something. The French have done something. Yeah, moved an air aircraft, moved an air unit. So, okay, moving on. That's everybody done what they want to do. Uh, no. Oh, right. Yeah. No. As I was just talking about supply. So what we now need to do is trace supply for the BEF. And so we do, the convoy does a supply trace back across the mainland Britain to one of its cities. Southampton is fine. Again, while we're doing this trace, it could be intercepted and stopped. And if it was stopped, the supply wouldn't go ahead and they would be marked as a low supply. Um, but if not, it's, it's fine. Now the convoy also needs, convoys are always in supply... Right, let's let's get this right though, Grant. Does this So he, he pays a sortie 
to supply to trace the supply for the BEF across the water. Come on. Oh dear. <laughs> Games of the counters. Right, so he's now taken two sorties then. Because it was one to come across, it's now one to trace the supply back. This one is one I'm a little unsure about though. Um Well <coughs> I think when I'm tracing the when I'm tracing the supply trees, I've got to decide if I'm wanting to escort the supply. So, and if we do that, then this would incur a sortie. If we didn't do that, he'd still be sitting at one. He's got to trace supply for himself now. Does he then have to pay the one for, for that? This is a bit that I'm not, I'm not so sure about. So, something you need to go and read about, Grant. I'm going to give him one sortie for saying that he was escorting the supply trace back. And I'm think you need to do that uh, and then come the time he needs to trace supply for himself I'm not going to give him a sortie uh, something feels wrong about that yeah you should really look this up now Grant, rather than guessing I mean, this, you're, you're almost coming to the end anyway so right okay I'll be on the way to try to work this one out right I think First of all, convoys don't need to trace supply for themselves. They are one of the things that are always in supply. They are used to do the tracing supply for other units, uh, ground units and air units, and they can supply warship units. However, warship surface units can do their own supply. It doesn't cost them a sortie to do it. However, they can be intercepted. So, that's that's how uh, my take on that is. Uh, the other things that don't, and like I say, convoys don't need to trace supply. The other things that don't need to trace supply are um, an island, a uh, garrison on an island. For instance, the Malta um, garrison that's on an island is always considered in supply. There's a special rule that says the Gibraltar unit is always in supply as well. Uh, that's a special sort of condition. A UK garrison ground unit in Gibraltar, it says. Um, a unit in a map box, a convoy unit, uh, and then a garrison ground unit in a port on an island. So they're all the things that are always considered to be in supply. Convoy being the one that we're talking about here. The surface fleet can trace its own supply and it doesn't cost it a sortie. Everything else does. Now it could it could use a convoy to trace supply. Why why it would do that, I'm not quite sure. Because a convoy would it, it would cost a sortie for to trace it through the convoy. So I'm not quite sure why you would do that. Um but like I say, it can be intercepted. So it could be intercepted and it could it could pick up sorties through the interception because the interception means it's it's being attacked and it's attacking by and they they'll they'll gather sorties that way so um okay so them coming across was a sortie and in there they both had the sortie each then tracing supply back for the bef remember he doesn't need to trace supply himself convoy's fine he traces that back himself uh and let's just let's just say well that's a bit of a waste isn't it we don't need we don't need the escort. We don't need it. We know that the the Germans, can, well, no, because they can't even use that surface action, can they? I don't believe so. So let's just say that we don't use the escort going back. We just trace the. Um. We want to bring the we want to bring the home fleet across with us because it's that's safer. So we spend the sortie coming across. Tracing the supply back, we don't bother about escorting it. So that then ends him with two sorties. And then for the home fleet to trace its, its supply, it traces its own and it doesn't cost a sorry. Okay? So I think that finishes on two, that finishes on one, and uh, that's all supplied and all is good in the world.
Okay. And then there's nothing else that we that supply needs to be traced for. So that's that. So move on. No supply phase. That's us finish with operation. No supply phase. Replacements phase. Right, the Germans are going to spend uh, three. They're going to spend three to knock the two sorties down from that aircraft. Uh, one, two, three, taking it down to uh, 22. So taking that five down to a three. And uh, they're also going to pay one to flip that guy to full strength now. That's another one. They're down to 21. Um, that is them. Yeah, that's that. That's all they can do. Okay, and then for the French this time, they're going to spend three. That's the first time they've spent any. To remove that sortie. Um, so, one, two, three. They've dropped down to 13. And then for the British, right, so they've got a convoy with two sorties on it, which costs, let's bring this in here in front of us. So, yeah, remove up to two sorties from a fighter, so uh, maybe not seen that, a fighter or a convoy is three. So I'm going to spend three points to do that. And then to remove two sorties from a carrier, which is... Uh, is that a carrier, that one? No, that's not the Force H, is it? That's just a... Uh, well, it says Home Fleet. Home Fleet. I guess that's just a surface. Yeah, it's not, it's not the carrier. Yeah, the carrier actually shows a ship and aircrafts on the counter. So it's it's not got that. So we are just not mobilising, Grant. We're just doing that. So I'm going to do two sorties from the convoy. That's going to cost me three. And then two sorties from the surface unit. That's going to cost me another three. So that's going to cost five in total. One, two, three, four, five. Which is fine, they're down to um, 11. They only need 5 for the um, diplomacy. So then we take the 2 sorties off the convoy and we take the 1 sortie off the the home fleet. And that was that. So you can see there was no... Well. But you need to try and you need to try these points and it's better to go about it first as well. Yeah? Make sure you're understanding what's happening eh? Um, that was replacements. Upgrade phase is none of that. Mobilization. Yeah, there's two German units to be mobilized. One's a garrison, one is not. So that's going to cost another two points for the Germans. Um, yeah, they're both. They're both just ground uh, infantry units. So one, two. That's in down in nineteen now. And let's just see where we're going to put them. Uh, well, this is the full strength one. So we want that kind of close by. So we'll put that in Frankfurt. And then the garrison we'll just put in Hanover there. That's fine. Uh, nobody else mobilised. And then diplomacy then. Mm. Okay. Uh, so we've got two political successes and the failure outside the cup. There is a paralysis marker in there, though. I mean, the Germans are happy now. They've got their ally that they need, so not quite so big a deal. Uh, uh, it's probably worth a pull. You never know. pro access, political success, might draw the area seized. That's not such a big deal now, though. So, yeah, I think we'll pay five and give it a go. So, shuffle them about. But one, two, three, four, five... So I'm going to cover in there, that was a bit wary. Right, so going to draw something. Go for that one. Right, no event. Okay. So, and then for the UK, or sorry, the Western. I think they probably want to pull as well. 
One, two, three, four, five. Their dynasty sack points. And they pull. Right, they pull the Pro Axis marker. So that just gets removed. Pretty sure that's what happens with that. It just gets removed. It's not beneficial or well it's, it's beneficial for the western because it means that we're not going to now draw it and then the soviets um they there's a near seas marker in the cup so they are going to draw as well and they get no event right okay so now there's three no events area seas and a political success to win there okay Victory check, there's no victory as of yet. We're going to advance the turn track. So, the other ground support's going to come back for the western side. That's us in March now. Um, so, that western uh, ground support, that's them got two now. And uh, then we would move any units and eliminate back to, back to the mobilization box. There's nobody in the eliminated units box. It's been a bit quiet of late. Um, and that's it. Okay. So, moving on, yeah. I mean, I think the next couple of turns are just going to be dependent on the weather. If if it's not fine weather, then I don't think we're doing anything as the access. And it looks like now that the Western side are happy to sit with what they've got. Um the other, the air unit, yeah, the air unit doesn't want to, I don't think it wants to come across, it, it, as long as it's in range of its BEF, it's fine sitting across there. And the further away it keeps from the German units as well, because if they want to try and airstrike it, they've got to get within seven hexes of that, which, to be honest, hmm, one, two, three, four, yeah, it's not, probably... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just out of range there. But once they go into Belgium, then they will. And the fact the French units move back there are probably going to have to move one of them to get in range, I think. Right, okay. I'll um, leave that for now. Uh, right, I'm not marking anything. Let's, let's just chuck a wee marker on weather phase there at the top, just as I sort of try to remind me that. I, I managed to leave the, the cut the videos now at the start of a new turn, so maybe not such a big deal about what I was saying about not knowing where I am, so. Okay, I'll be back a bit later, um, just take a little break the now and I should get another part done. Maybe even a couple parts done the night and then back to work. I'm going to force myself back to work. I've, I've, I had taken some time off work because I was struggling. I really was pretty bad. Don't feel like I'm totally recovered yet, but the last time I had this kind of flu type thing, uh, the cold side of it, it went on for about six weeks, you know, so I can't quite justify that much time off work, but, well, what can you do? You're going away into work feeling kind of miserable, but, um, yeah, sometimes you just have to do that. Eh? Uh, okay, I'll get away from now. I'll be back later. Cheers.